Hello there, I'm Tom from Smarterials. Um, welcome to my video, I'm showing you how to terminate a coaxial cable into a uh, satellite wall plate. So if you want to make your, um, just your TV set up a bit neater, or um, if you want to be able to sort of move, have a bit of flexibility in your room, it's a good idea to put something like this a little satellite wall plate on your wall. So worst case scenario, you might have to get a longer lead and it looks a bit tidier, especially for when there's nothing there. Um, uh, so, let me know why you might do it. <laughs> uh, before I begin, I'm just gonna go over the two, the two most common uh, wall plates you're gonna get. So we're gonna have, this isn't a satellite one, but it, it could be a satellite one. There's nothing behind here that sort of changes. It's just, it's just that bit. So we've got one here and we can sort of see it's just all open to the elements. So we've got the it's like a saddling clamp type connection. Uh, now that isn't a very good plate. Now that's because way where you sort of open the cable up, that's a weak spot, all interference to get in there. So you need you really should be trying to protect it somehow. Um, especially like sort of in kitchens and stuff because you can get interference from your other sort of kitchen equipment which can then feed up in and, and ruin the signal. And I've actually come across instances where the TV itself has put out a frequency which is interfering with the signal uh, when the TV went up on the wall in the kitchen. So although the plate worked it just wasn't good enough for that TV. <laughs> yeah it's a bizarre situation but and um, here's a good one. So this one if you look here at the moment, it's, it's, it, you can't really see much, but it's because we need to open it up. It's all in the metal housing. And it's what we call um, a screened wall plate. Uh, now, if you've got the choice of buying the two, get the screened. It might not always match um, the, what, the wall plates you've got, in which case I have got a suggestion for that too, which I'll, I'll get to in a moment. But I'm just going to open this up. Because um, sometimes where the wall plates don't match, it can look a bit, a bit crap, especially if you've got wall plates with rounded edges. Um, and like then the sort of square wall plates, or where the whites differ. It's amazing how many different shades of white there is. Um, so let's get this one here. So, ah, here we go. So inside, oh, well, it's not the camera then. <laughs> let's get back over here. Um, inside we've got the, a bit further, we've got the wall plate. So in there, if I take that little grill out, we've got a little screw. So it's the same sort of idea, except this one's in a metal housing, so it's screened. It's much better, um, and it's much more important nowadays. You'll use screen cables because if you're not, there's no point putting an unscreen wall plate on a screen cable. You kind of lose the lose the benefit. So um, I'm now going to show you how to terminate into one of these. We're going to assume you've got like a bat box. Now this might be a surface bat box. It might be all these sort of recessed into a wall, like a metal box or a dry line and bat box to go into. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I've got there's going to be there's other videos to show you how to do that, but we're not going to focus on this one, otherwise it's just going all day. But I've, I'm just going to use this as an example, the world's biggest bat box. <laughs> um, so that would sort of be there. Uh, tools we're going to need, we're going to need some cutters, a Sunny blade or, or sort of co coaxial preparation tool, something sort of custom made for the job, but I've just reckon with most professional people just use those. Uh, and just sort of screwdrivers fit for purpose basically. These just one's a little Phillips, one's a flathead. Um, now, so we're gonna start preparing the coax. So we've got that. Now let's get off the black PVC outside sheath. We do that but one a little ring round it with a sharp Stanley blade and we pull that off and then we're left with something like that. So on a good cable we've got a screen, not screen sorry, we've got the braid which is the ground shield and the screen. Uh, and then the best cable is it will be copper, copper, copper and then the inside conductor be copper too but this might be tinned so it might be silver or it might be a copper clad, a copper -clad steel cable um, which isn't always the end of the world if you've got it in but if you've got the budget you know, if just a couple extra quid, I'd, I'd use the good cable. Um, and we're going to sort of prepare it so it's about that, so about half a centimetre, um, quarter of an inch if you're watching this in the USA. <laughs> we do still use inches for some things in the UK, but not everything. I don't know, it's a bizarre situation we're in. But, um, so we're going to do that. Now, what that does, once I've loosened off the inside screw, it's inside there. We don't want to loosen it all the way, because if it loosens it all the way, it'll fall out. And then it's not there to get back in again. Now that will just insert 
into there. Now when that's in position, we can screw that back down and then it's safe to work with again. So you can sort of see there it's in position. It's important that the, the braid and the center conductor never touch. So that they've got to make contact. So the braid's got to make contact with the outside plug and the center conductor's got to make contact with the, the inside bit. They've got to both con connect, but they can't connect to each other. So um, if, if you do get a little stray strand on the braid, you create a short and uh, it won't work properly. Or it won't work at all for satellite actually because there's power running up. It'll just create a short of the power won't run up there. If it's for TVLs, it might work, but it'll be a lot weaker than it, it otherwise would if you just took that short off. Um, so, but now we can shut down this lid. Get the screws limit in. And just tighten them up. So I'm trying to do this so you can see what I'm doing. If you are interested, these particular plates are anti-ference wall plates. Um, it, I mean, it's not up and running as we speak at the moment in time, but when you're watching this video, we might have our online shop up and running. So um, certainly links below. If we if we can see this sort of stuff, we will. And then, you know, you get the right bits and bobs when you order from us. Um, so get it nice and tight. Want to get it tight, but not like so it's crushing the cable tight. So there we go, it's a sort of finished connection. Now that's ready just for you know an F connector, fly lead to go into your into your satellite receiver. Uh, and then we can just sort of screw that back to there. Obviously with your back box, that probably comes with a back box, but I don't know if I want to reuse that later. So but that's ready to go. Uh, it does lead to the obvious question is what if you've got two of these wall plates, which is common for um, sort of PVRs like sky boxes or free sat boxes with recording facilities, you'd have two satellite signals going into them. Uh, or SkyQ or something like that. Now, so you, you can do the same thing, and I just re recommend a similar process, but with a twin wall plate. You can buy them twin, or you can use something like this, a module, surround, and two modules, the right way, which just clip in position, like that. So now we've got a twin plate, and it's exactly the same thing, it's two Two of them basically on that. So you just just repeat the process twice and you've got a twin plate. Also, this, this process is good for when, like I was saying, if you can't match wall plates, so if you can't get a screened wall plate in your electrical range, because certainly a lot of, a lot of man, man, electrical manufacturers don't make screen wall plates, they'll make wall plates like that. So although they will match their plug sockets and stuff like that, they're not technically the, the things we should be using or the optimum things that we should use. I'm not saying they won't work, but really want to put the better connections in so you can often buy the surround that matches your current electrical range so it might have the curve edges it might be black it might be gold it might be granite you know you obviously get the gists or a brushed steel or something and we can just put our inserts inside um, obviously the inserts will not quite, might always match but you can get black ones um, so certainly you can you can do something to try and sort of tidy up the job and make it match the rest of your rest of your property um, and that's it. So I hope you like this video. Uh, if you do have any questions, please do leave in the section below. If you if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Give it a share if you're on social media, please. Um, it's, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. Uh, we've done we've done lots of videos in the past, very similar ones with sort of aerial satellite connections and and data connections. So you will learn a lot if you subscribe to our channel. Um, and that's it. So I'm Tom from Smart Aerials. Bye for now.